We're going to change focus a little bit. I know you've been all alone over there on the side oh, because we've you. been discovering, <laughs> discussing hemophilia, but we're going to turn our attention to lupus, SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus. Um, I want to discuss the pathophysiologic basis of the disease, just as we asked Patrick to sort of lay it out for us. Uh, I suspect you've got a more difficult task. Um, what is SLE? SLE is complex. Oh, thanks. But it, it, is, it is understandable. It basically is an autoimmune process, so the immune system will attack self. In lupus, though, that means virtually every organ could potentially be involved. There is a huge genetic predisposition. I think people are surprised to learn that lupus is two-thirds genetic risk. But then, of course, that leaves one-third environmental with exposures to ultraviolet light, common infections like EB virus, pollutants, so mercury, silica, insecticides. And then, of course, it's also hormonal. So there are nine women for every one man with lupus. So it, it favors females in the sense that it affects more women than men. Correct. Right. Um, what other genetic demographic uh, predispositions do we see? Well, a huge issue in the United States is that lupus is both more severe and more common in African Americans and Hispanic Americans. And Hispanic Americans are, of course, the most rapidly growing segment of the U.S. population. And then there are, as you alluded to, extrinsic and intrinsic components of this disease. And there's this ANA thing going on that all the medical students, even when I was in medical school, when pterodactyls roamed the earth, we all knew about ANA. Where does that all fit in? Well, we actually want to de-emphasize ANA because it turns out that 20%... I've got to forget medical school? Uh, sorry. 20%... Uh, You're sorry. I paid for that medical school. 20% of normal young women have a positive ANA. So we have more elaborate new classification criteria for lupus where the person has to have multiple clinical manifestations and autoantibody tests. An ANA alone cannot lead to the diagnosis of lupus. So 20 to 30 percent of normals have positive ANA tests? Yes. That explains so much. Well, unfortunately it does because fibromyalgia is very common and a woman who has fibromyalgia causing chronic pain and a positive ANA will sometimes be misdiagnosed with lupus. I see, because the ANA is positive even though 30% of the time that doesn't mean 20%. Let's not make it worse than it is. Well, I'm not sure that's bad or good. It just is, right? It's a number. Yeah.